What's up guys, Mike Builds. Today we have a solar panel to test and review and try out, and hopefully we'll be able to use this for some mini future projects. So let's get this thing open and take a look. Also in the box along with the solar panel, you do get the little manual, so I do suggest kind of skimming through this. Actually, this is the specs for their P-type solar panels, and these are the specs for the N-type solar panels. So you can kind of go between the two, maybe compare them and see which one you would want to use. So there's all the specs for our specific panel right there, the 200 watt one. So that way we have something to kind of compare it to during our testing. Also talks about series and paralleling connections and all that good stuff. So always skim through this if you need a little bit more information. But anyways, let's get testing. So normally a lot of the panels that I've seen for sale on Amazon are 100 watt, but these 200 watt panels are starting to become really, really popular. And it's really nice because with one 200 watt panel replaces two 100 watt panels. So less wiring and things like that that you have to worry about, you can just plug and play and you get an instant 200 watts. So my goal in this video is to put this thing through the test. We're gonna do some full sun testing. Then we're, gonna, we're actually gonna raise it off the ground, put it on a little table that has nothing on the bottom. That way all the light can hit the bottom of the solar panel to see how much power we can actually get out of this. Now a really awesome feature about this panel and the reason why I purchased this panel personally is because of the price. Right now you can actually buy this panel on Amazon for 189 bucks. So you're gonna be able to get this for less than a dollar per watt. Now keep in mind, this does go on sale quite often. I've seen it as low as $160 per panel. So I would shop around a little bit to see if you can get the best deal on this panel. But right now, $189 on Amazon shipped to your house. So that's pretty good. Now my plan is to take this solar panel and actually mount it to the top of my golf cart like so, or maybe even get two of these and put them lengthwise or widthwise, not really sure yet. But as you guys can see, it fits up there absolutely perfect. So we're gonna be able to actually create a solar charging setup for the golf cart. And I figured a 200 watt panel will be perfect. I don't gotta worry about seriesing up nothing or worrying about that. But I do gotta worry about those wasps. 25% efficiency for the size, I guess that's pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put us together a little setup to where we can actually test this thing. We're gonna get this thing mounted on a little stand and see how much kilowatt hours that we get out of this thing. We're also gonna test maximum output that we get in the most perfect sun that I can get here in Texas. So y'all can see out of the 200 watts that they rate this, how much power we actually get out of it. All right, as far as dimension, 51 and a half inches long by about 30 and a quarter inches wide. Now, I also have two of these Renogy 100 watt panels. So if you put these next to each other, I'm gonna put this one Renogy panel right here, but just to give you guys an idea. So imagine if we had our second Renogy panel here, you can see how much bigger it would be to have two Renogy panels to produce 200 watts versus this one 200 watt panel. So that's a nice space savings that you're gonna get with the more compact Bogue RV. Here's the setup we're gonna use to test our Bogue RV 200 watt bifacial panel. We have this nice metal table here. Panel's nicely supported with a little bit of an angle that's gonna face the sun perfectly. I've also installed one of these amp watt meters and this is actually gonna keep track of all the maximums we get. I went ahead and added our power wires from the solar panel, plugged it directly into our charge controller with MC4s. I have this little extension harness that I built. And the nice thing about this charge controller we're gonna be using, this is the Batra Power Sunrock 30. This can actually log total watt hours that we generate. But once the sun goes down right now, we're gonna go into the phone app and we're actually gonna reset it to zero. I'm gonna make sure our battery is discharged enough to where whatever amount of solar that we generate can be absorbed into the battery. And we're gonna let this sit in the sun all day tomorrow. This is just the day before. So everything's gonna be reset to zero and we're actually going to see what we're gonna generate in a full day. The weather here is perfect to be testing, so we should get a full day of sun tomorrow as well. Let's just see what we're generating right now, now that everything's connected. Right now we're only making 86 watts, but there's a cloud getting in front of the sun. And you can see right here in the app of the charge controller, it actually will data log day by day how much power we're gonna be making. So what I'm going to do is after we finish the full day's worth of charging, I'm gonna take a screenshot of this and put it in the video so we can actually see the results of the solar panel. Uh, so what I wanna show you guys right now is the maximum wattage we were able to get out of this. There you go right there, 203. 0 0.0 WP, so that's our watts maximum. We've charged 51 amp hours into our battery that this thing's connected to. We've made 478 watt hours, and mind you, the day's still not over. We're still producing a little bit of power. Our amperage peak was 13.6 amps. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up testing of this Bogue RV 200 watt solar panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the Charge Pro app on my phone, and this actually data logged all the data that we got from the solar panel that I've been having run all week. All right, guys, so I threw a couple screenshots up on the screen, and if we guys look at this together, the first picture you see is kind of just a normal line graph, and the accumulated charge amount in watt hours was 1,224. And what I noticed is that was about the average I got. I actually let this test run for a few days, but the data was very inconsistent because a lot of those days we had a cloud cover, so I really didn't want to include them in this video. But the average that I saw for the most part was about anywhere between 1,100 to 1,220 watt hours. So that's pretty good. And the highest maximum charging power we saw was 205 watts. So that's really good. Here's another picture of a different date. And as you guys can see on this day, we only made 185 watts maximum power. 
and we made 1,211 watt hours. So overall, the panel did really well. I think in the future, I actually probably wanna pick up maybe two or three more of these, and that's gonna be my full 12 volt system is gonna be a few of these. I think the biggest thing with this big panel versus these smaller ones is this is a little bit smaller. It's also a little bit lighter. So when I do camping trips or off-road trips or whatever, I can just take this one panel with me, take a charge controller and a battery and an inverter, and I'll have a full on-the-go solar power system. And I only have to deal with one panel, one connection. It makes everything really, really easy. So overall, this thing was really nice, and I think for the money, it's pretty good. It's below a dollar a watt. I think you can't beat that. Well, guys, that's going to do it for the short video of me testing the solar panel. Thank you all so much for watching. If you made it to the end of the video, I appreciate it very much, and I'll see you all in the next one.